Hey, it's Matt from Practice Perfect. Welcome back to the Accelerated Learning Center. Today we're going to talk about how to set up HICFA invoices. Let's get started. Step 1. Begin by selecting Settings and then HICFA slash eHICFA invoice settings from the menu bar at the top of your screen. This will reveal the HICFA 1500 invoice settings panel. Step 2. Take note of the several tabs that this panel is comprised of. HICFA 1500, Fees, Diagnoses, Providers, Service Locations, Payers, and Resubmission Codes. Naturally, the first tab that we're going to look at is the HICFA 1500 tab. The HICFA 1500 tab deals with the actual production of the HICFA invoice. The HICFA Red Form section was put in place to help you align your HICFA form with your printer. We know that every printer handles margins differently, so it may be necessary to adjust the offsets and the address margin so that everything is aligned properly when you go to print your form. It will take a bit of trial and error. We usually suggest adjusting the offset by a quarter inch at a time. When it comes to the address offset, it's generally 4.40 inches when needed. If you change everything at once, it might be difficult to figure out the full effect of each change, which is why we recommend changing just a quarter inch at a time. Choose how you would like the preview of the HICFA form to appear in the Preview Type field. This can be set to either Data Review, which will provide you with a breakdown of the information contained within your submission and any potential missing information, or an actual form, which will produce an exact replica of the HICFA form itself. You also have the option to suppress the submission report. Whenever you generate a HICFA form within Practice Perfect, a submission report will be printed automatically. By selecting Suppress Submission Report, you'll prevent Practice Perfect from printing these reports automatically. The HICFA Electronic section pertains to your eHICFA invoices. Use the Invoice Save Location field to designate where these files will be saved on your computer. This is an important designation because you'll need to know where your invoices are stored when you're ready to submit them to your clearinghouse. Choose how you would like the preview for the eHICFA form to appear in the Preview Type field. Again, you have the option to suppress the submission report here too. Please note that this is likely the only tab that you will need to edit with regards to your HICFA 1500 and eHICFA invoices. We suggest that you contact the support department if you find yourself needing to make changes in any of the following tabs. Furthermore, any changes to your fees, diagnoses, providers, etc. will only apply to your HICFA and eHICFA invoices. If you wish to change them globally, you need to actually change the fee code, provider, etc. itself. Step 3. Next click on the Fees tab. The items in the fee and rate columns are exact copies of the names and rates of all your fee codes. However, because your clinic may use different internal codes for your treatments and assessments, you'll need to match your codes with the corresponding service or supply code. For example, internally, you may refer to a physical therapy evaluation as a PT eval, but to the outside world, it's known as a 97001. Albeit, it is rare that any changes need to be made in this panel. If you wish to enter a service or supply code, double click the blank field and type the code out. Please note that the items in the fee and rate tab are married to the fee code section and must be changed there if you want them to be changed here. Also note that your internal fee codes will be the ones that appear on your invoices unless specified here. A blank entry means that your internal code will be exposed to the outside world. Step 4. After you've set up your fees, click on the Diagnoses tab. 
The items in the code and description columns are an exact copy of your diagnostic codes. HICFA submissions require the use of ICD-10 codes. The ICD-10 codes come preloaded in the software, and unless you've made changes to your diagnostic codes, you need not make any changes here. To enter a HICFA code, double-click the field and type out the code. Step 5. Click on the Providers tab. This table is essentially a list of your providers. This tab should only be used if the MPI number that you wish to include on HICFA invoices for a specific provider is different than the NPI number that was set up in the provider's profile. For example, if John Smith has an NPI number of 12345, but on HICFA and eHICFA claims you want to show John's number as being 54321, this is where you make that designation. Only in a case like this would this tab be altered. To make a change, double click the blank field in the numbers column and input the NPI number for the provider that you wish to include on your HICFA claims. A blank indicates that the NPI number from their provider profile should be used instead. It is rare that any changes will need to be made in this tab. Step 6. HICFA payers are going to need to know where the treatment was performed. This is known as the service location. The service locations themselves are taken directly from your list of location codes created during setup. The most common location codes are preloaded with 11, meaning in clinic. To set up location codes, select housekeeping, financial, and then location codes from the menu bar at the top of your screen. Double click the blank cell in the code column to input the corresponding place of service code outlined by HICFA. It is very rare that any changes will need to be made in this tab. Step 7. Next click on the payers tab. This is a list of all your payers. Certain clearinghouses require payers to be identified by a special code. If so, that code can be entered in the payer identifier field. Double click the blank cell to input the payer identifier number if necessary for each payer on the list. Step 8. Resubmission codes are used when a previously submitted claim has been denied and you're resubmitting it to a payer. Some of these payers will ask you to provide a resubmission code with the form, and this is the tab where you identify that code. Please note that these codes are preloaded and generally do not require any alteration. There are three columns in this table, code, description, and note required. The code refers to the number that will be entered in the resubmission code field on the HICFA form. The most commonly used code is 7, which indicates that you're replacing our previously submitted claim form. The description offers an explanation about the code. And lastly, the note required checkbox tells Practice Perfect whether or not you will need to make a note about the use of this resubmission code. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for visiting. Be sure to check out the other accelerated learning videos at practiceperfectemr.com. Bye for now.